is MBDC back with another video for you guys here today. And sorry if I'm a little excited, but the shows are back. Arrowverse is back on after the long break. This is my first full review video. Kind of stoked about it. Was very excited to watch The Flash uh, tonight. Was, was very excited to watch The Flash tonight. So, we got some key points you need to go over. Um, just before I go on with the video, make sure to drop a like to show your support for the channel, Flash in general. And also, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys agree with me and how I felt about the episode and, and what you guys think about the episode and stuff like that. So, let's get on to a couple of talking points. So, the episode... So, if you guys remember the mid-season finale, you know, they do time travel. They meet whales and stuff like that. And Nord figures out that uh, Eobard Wells, as I like to call him, killed his her grandmother. So, she goes back to the year 2049 to confront him about it. And that was at the end of that, that's where it left off. And this episode picks up right where that episode left off, where she is near 2049, where E.O. Bart Wells is locked up. And she's basically telling him like, hey dude, why didn't you tell me you killed my grandmother? Like, I'm supposed to trust you. Why didn't you tell me this? And he's basically telling her like, I've given you everything. Like, he said, he said I've given you everything. I gave you a chance to be the, Fla or to run with the Flash, to learn from the Flash, to be around your father. And I basically wanted to be the Flash, but I couldn't. I mean, Nora's like, you're not the Flash. She's like, I know I can't. So it's made me do some evil things. Basically, his explainer, you know, for Nora's, hey, I want to be the Flash. I'm very jealous. End up becoming the reverse Flash. And then, so she kind of speeds away, basically saying she doesn't trust him. Now it gets back into to present day. Everyone's like, oh, where's our uh, Sherlock's her, where's, where's baby giraffe? And <laughs> talking about the elongated man. And where's uh, Nora? They say, oh, he's off with some family and stuff like that. Uh, baby giraffe and or is like oh right here she pops up with the suit because i guess they're going to court cecile's first day back at work off of maternity leave they're going to persecute weather witch weather witch being weather wizard's daughter for the things she did at the hangar a couple episodes back they're going to church to to be the csi bears going to church to be the csi to testify against her and what she did at the hangar and she comes in, I guess she comes in with the suit and says, oh, it goes, some, it goes a nice blue suit for you, enough green for you. Basically doing a reference of the, the crossover saying, you know, you're the green arrow on the crossover, enough green. Uh, it goes a blue suit for you. So I guess they go to court, whatever. And while they're in court, they get an alert. So we get introduced to another Metatech human. I, so I guess that's what I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him a, met a Metatech human because... They're not meta humans, they just have meta tech that they use to control different things like Span, use to control the media, Weather Witch and her staff. And this one, this one is Silver Ghost. Now there is a Silver Ghost in the DC Comics, totally different character. I guess they call her Silver Ghost because she's ex-military, uh, ex-Air Force mechanic, knows a lot about cars and planes and stuff like that. But Silver Ghost was her name, was her calling name. So basically they just call her Silver Ghost in this episode. I think Silver Ghost is like a nice old school uh, Rolls, Rolls Royce, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it kind of has that reference there with cars and stuff like that. So that's why they call her Silver Ghost. But it shows her cop doing a sobriety test on the guy driving the Lamborghini. It shows her with her meta key fob. So she has a meta key fob that's her meta tech and can use to control cars, give the car some kind of force field abilities and she can control anything with an engine, Cisco says in the episode. So she basically takes this Lamborghini, Barry and Nora have to rush out of court. And as they're trying to catch her, Barry's gonna face through the car, grab the driver and Nora's supposed to take over the wheel, but that doesn't happen because Barry gets hit with the boom, a blast. Next thing you know, he's phasing. He's stuck phasing because I guess how they explain it is unstable dark matter while he was phasing. The unstable dark matter temporarily got in him, I guess, for 24 hours so he can phase through the floor to his death. So they lock him up in uh, the cell, you know, down there in the, you know, with the metadaphening cell and stuff like that. So they lock, up, lock him up in there for the episode. So he's essentially sidelined for the whole episode. He's essentially in the metadaphening cell the whole episode. And I think that's because when he was, they were shooting, you know, they shoot uh, episodes concurrently, I guess. I guess he was shooting the crossover or something like that. And so he couldn't really be a main character in this episode. And this episode was a little bit about Nora trying to learn to trust people, trying to know that people can grow and people can change, and people can become better. And so she's still reeling off the fact that Eobar killed her grandmother and didn't tell her. And she's like, once evil, always evil. That's kind of her thinking on it, uh, which that kind of plays into the storyline of her not trusting Weather Witch. So she basically is going off in the courtroom. She flies off the handle, loses her cool, 
which makes uh, Weather Witch snap and say, yep, I did it, send me to jail. On her way to jail, she is broken out by Silver Ghost, who takes over the transport carrier. She gets broken out, she gets taken to the Young Rogue's home base, as she called it. Yes, the home base. I guess they're going with Young Rogue's, not New Rogue's or something like that. I think it was New Rogue's in the comics, but TV shows go TV shows going with Young Rogues, and I think Spin, as I mentioned earlier, had Meditech, was supposed to be a part of it. They didn't mention they didn't mention any other members of, I guess, the supposed Young Rogues. If you guys know who else might be the Young Rogues, let me know with a comment down below. But she gets taken to the home base. She's like, nah, I don't want to do this. I'm not a criminal. That's my father. I don't want to be remembered like that. Or I don't want people to think of me like that. So she basically somehow lures Nora in or gets in contact with Nora. I was like, Nora, can you help me? I'm not a criminal. And Nora, like I said, still reeling from E.O. Bardwell's, does not trust whether which once a criminal, always a criminal, turns her back in, basically gives up on her. Uh, Silver Ghost breaks her out of jail, of course because her master plan is to steal this Wayne Tech $24 million prototype car that has all sorts of emojis and abilities. I guess it can cloak, it can phase, it can do all kinds of crazy stuff. So she basically needs a weather witch to blow out the power in Argus so that way she can break in and steal this car from Argus. They do that, or she breaks out of jail, they go to Argus, weather witch uses her electricity to uh, get rid of the power. They break into Argus, they steal the car successfully. Of course, Barry sidelines, you have Nora, and Nora takes Killer Frost out, so we get some Killer Frost action a little bit to try and stop them from stealing the Wayne Tech car, which is untraceable. So they use, they use Weather Witch's staff to ch help trace the car. They find her, they catch up to her. Now, I, I don't know, maybe because I work in a car dealership and I work, in, uh, I work with cars and people buying new cars and I always, always hear people having trouble learning how to work these new cars. She done right in that car and knew exactly what every little emoji on the screen meant and what it did. Like when Killer Frost put up that ice wall and they phased right through it and she hit the little phase button, the ghost button, I guess, the ghost emoji. The phase right I'm thinking to myself, like, how did you know it was gonna do that? How did you know it was gonna work that well? What if it wouldn't have worked? guys would have died. I don't know. Like, to me, I was just, that was funny. But basically, you got Nora, Killer Frost trying to catch up to him, trying to, you know, retrieve the car, get them thrown in jail. But basically, whether they go invisible, Nora's can't see the car, whether which, the car's coming, Silver Ghost is going straight for Nora. Gonna hit her with the car, possibly kill her, because Nora can't see it because it's cloaked at this point. Weather Witch puts ice on the ground, because remember, she can control the weather. She can make icy conditions, puts ice on the ground. Silver Ghost loses control of the car, doesn't hit Nora, they crash to a bunch of cars, and they catch up to him, and Nora's like, oh, Hey, thanks for the ice. Thanks for the save. Talking to Killer Frost. Killer Frost's like, that's not me. Makes Nora kind of snap in and go, oh, okay. Well, maybe people can be redeemed. Maybe this can happen. And I think she started coming to that realization because she had to go in and have a talk with the Flash. I had to go and talk with her dad. And her dad basically told her, like, yes, people can change. People can grow out of being a criminal. I me. Mean, look at Leonard Snart. He was the worst criminal I know. He sacrificed himself as a hero and died a legend. And she kind of asked about Eobard Wells. She said, hey, what can Eobard think? change too and he's like at and Barry goes at some point in the future I believe even he has the capacity to change too now I don't know if you guys I don't I don't know if like if that was me alarm bells would start going off like why are you asking about the guy I hate the most like why are you asking about my nemesis if that was my daughter and we we're having a talk and she brought up my nemesis and he's not like irrelevant like we're not searching for him we're not looking for him we're not fighting him he's supposedly erased from existence at this point why are you bringing him up like that would have been the first clue to me if I was like that would have like hmm maybe I wouldn't have said that but I, hmm why are you bringing up Eobar Wells. That talk she had with her dad kind of played into her talking to Weather Witch and which Weather Witch saves her. But they still get away, but they do retrieve the car at the end of the episode. And that's kind of the, the gist of the episode is it's all about kind of setting up Young Rhodes on at the end of the episode, I guess, with her new way of thinking after talking to her dad, breaking through the we Weather Witch, she broke through to her. She goes back to the year 2049, back to Eobar Wells in jail, and says, and he goes straight up, do you trust me or do you not? She goes, no, I don't trust you, but I'm willing to give you the chance to prove to me that you can't be trusted. Says something along those lines, and he goes, well, I don't have a lot of time. He looks up at this clock ticking down. I don't know what this clock is for. No one knows, I mean, they haven't revealed it yet. I mean, I'm thinking that's from the, because he, you know, he gets erased from existence when season one, when um, Eddie Thon shot himself. I'm thinking he's working up to that point where he gets erased from existence. I'm thinking it's, it has something to do with that. Because they, they said before the season even started, they said they're doing a lot of callbacks to season one. They said they're getting that season one vibe. So 
this would be the perfect way to tie in what happened at the end of season one to what's going on now or in 2049. I think that countdown is for him to be erased from existence. So I think they're holding him in that cell on that device until he becomes erased from existence. So I would say a lot of people are saying he might be getting executed when that timer goes, runs down, but I've never heard. I mean, it is year 2049. I don't know what happens, but never heard of a countdown for an execution being put in jail. And then also that's kind of not CW style. I just think it's something that has to do with him being erased from existence or the Black Flash catching up to him or something like that because maybe he's not supposed to be there. We don't know. Maybe he's waiting for that time where they come and take him, you know, the Speed Force comes and takes him out of this timeline or he gets erased from existence. That's just my opinion. Again, let me know your opinion down in the comment section. But overall, I thought this, I feel like they put this together with the the promos. They, I think they released three promos before the episode came out. They thought we're gonna, I thought we're gonna get all this time travel stuff with Barry and Nora, uh, Barry, Iris, and Nora. I thought we were going to get some, some cicada. This was not a cicada episode at all. They referenced them a little bit when Sherlock was, oh, yeah, Sherlock was doing his investigations and asking questions, and there he goes, about the chrono-linguistics. I guess that's what they're calling it, not time language, chrono-linguistics. He was asking some Barry questions about that from when he came out of the Speed Force last season. And he goes, oh, for cicada? And he's like, nah, I'm just, I'm a detective. I ask questions, what I do. But... Yeah, so he goes into the time vault, Sherlock, Sherlock, goes into the time vault at the end of the episode, trying to find a way to wake up Gideon. He finally wakes up Gideon, and she's like, hello, hello, Mr. Wells. And he asks her, hey, you can dig up any record for me, right? She goes, of course. And he goes, okay, I want the record on Nora West Allen. She goes, oh, those records have been deleted permanently by Nora. So, obviously, Nora's hiding something. Is she hiding something else? Or is this has to do with the, her being working with the reverse flash? She's be, she's hiding, but I know if we know anything about Sherlock, we know he's gonna keep investigating Nora because he knows something's not right, and he's gonna figure it out. And that's how I think the whole team's gonna kind of find out about Eobar Wells and the whole Nora situation. I think you know Sherlock's gonna have something to do with that. Overall, I thought it was a good episode. Not what I was expecting, obviously, with all the promos. I know they sometimes add future episodes, like the next two, three episodes, into one promo, kind of clickbaity, but. Overall, thought it was a great episode. Thought it was a really good episode. It was very enjoyable. Um, I know they're setting up some things with the middle. They're setting up the young rogues, teaching this whole season. Every episode, Nora is learning a new lesson. I get that, and this is another one of those episodes where she's learning a lesson. It kind of seems like that's the kind of thing we're going with this season. Nora learning new, new life lessons and stuff like that. She's getting to learn from the Flash. So, great episode. Definitely like to hear what you guys think down in the comment section. And oh yeah, did you guys catch that when they were removed? Moving the the sh shrapnel from Cisco saying says you can't play PS4 anymore. I guess he's working on some meta human gene that might have something to do with Cisco leaving. I, I heard at the before the season started, Cisco was might leave this end of the season. Won't or the guy who plays Cisco will not be Carlos Valdez. That's his name. Will not be playing Cisco at the end of the season. So that might have something to do because he wants a family and stuff like that. So he believes he has to cure himself of the meta human dark matterness to have a family. But you hear. <laughs> Um, him say he plays PS4. What game do you think he plays? Battlefield 5 or COD? Do you think he's Call of Duty or a Battlefield player? I'd like to hear what you guys think down below. I think he is a Call of Duty player 100%. Definitely would love to play with Cisco. But, yeah, um... We'll see where that that storyline goes with him curing and Caitlyn and Cisco trying Caitlyn assisting Cisco to find the metahuman cure. We'll see where that storyline goes in the future. It might be a way to get Cisco out off the show without killing him. But that's been it. Let's wrap up this review. I thought it was a good episode, not great. Kind of a filler episode. Kind of a way to set up some young rogue stuff, set up some future stuff for Eel Barthon, teach Nora some life lessons, and you know, kind of a standard episode if you ask me. Nothing too crazy going on, nothing big. Going on, if I'd say big talking points is Wells in the future and the countdown, and them setting up the young rogues. Those are the two talking points of the whole episode. But definitely like to hear what you guys think. Can't wait for the next episode, of, uh, season five, episode 11. Stay tuned for I got Arrow coming back, Black Lightning, and Supergirl coming back. Stay tuned for those reviews. This this is MBDC, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.